great governor, working family governor of North Carolina, the Honorable Beverly Purdue. Josh's microphone. I apologize for that. Uh, I'm delighted to be with James Andrews. He is as good as it gets in North Carolina and America. Give him a round of applause for his leadership of the local North Carolina. And every time I visit with you and, and your leaders, and I do that frequently as governor of this state, because the issues that continue to confound us are working families issues. I know that, and you know that. And I seek advice and counsel about what it is that we can do for the members in your organization who are unemployed now and the members of other business communities across North Carolina. This has been a challenging time and Melvin and uh, others who are the leadership of the AFL will understand that. But I've had two great partners and every tough decision and every move pushing North Carolina forward uh, in those decisions, and I want to welcome them here. You've got two great legislative leaders who found time from a busy time in the legislative schedule to join us. Representative Deborah Ross, who's sitting up here on my right, is a real friend. She's not just a friend of labor, she's a friend of the people of North Carolina, and that's what really counts. We want people to understand this thing we're doing for North Carolina is about every single human being in the state. And I think I saw Senator Josh Stein walk in. Josh is at the back of the room that doesn't say. Josh may be at the back of the room, but he's at the front of the line on working for labor and for working families in North Carolina. We thank you, Josh, for your leadership and your friendship. You all have been gracious enough, James and uh, the AFL, to invite me to speak with you year after year during the convening of the opening of the session and as you all have this policy work group meeting that you do every year in February. And you've heard me say before, I became governor at the most challenging time in North Carolina's history since the Great Depression. The challenges for you and your families and your communities across North Carolina have been enormous. And the thing that helps me sleep and smile and pray for continued faith that the people of North Carolina is simply that, the people of North Carolina. I have never seen such resilience and such capacity to retrain and retool and move forward. We've seen tremendous movement in North Carolina's economy in the last two years. And you'll hear some of the information that I will present in the State of the State before the General Assembly next Friday evening, next Monday evening at 7. Uh, if you can't be there, go to the website when we talk about how far we've come in North Carolina. When I took office, we had a $4.6 billion hole. Granted, it's better today. It's been a struggle. As all of you know, it's not good yet, but we're moving in the right trajectory. This afternoon, I will have the opportunity of announcing to the folks of North Carolina how much healthier our economy is than we would even thought this time six months ago. But two years ago, it was bleak. It was bleak. Unemployment moved pretty quickly to 11.2%. It's down now to about 9.6%. I'm not proud of that. That's much too high. I'm certainly not happy with it when I go into your communities and talk to people who've lost their jobs and families who are struggling. But the magic of North Carolina is the fact that every time I'm on the road, and you see me out there, I, I see, I'm in so many of your plants and your, your businesses. The magic of North Carolina is the stories that I continue to hear. The 65-year-old who is now a biotech worker who was fired from Pilotex in the early 2000s, Y'all remember Pilotex, 5,000 jobs gone in one night. That man now, 65 years old, is making a high salary in the 80s because he had the guts, the pure guts, to go back to the community college to retool. He was making underwear, and here he is today making pharmaceuticals. That's talking about transition. That man did that, and there are thousands of people that I could tell you about in North Carolina that I've had the privilege to meet who've done the same thing. 
That's the magic, North Carolina. But this state, my friends, is at a crossroads. I'm not exaggerating it. We have come a long way and we're going in the right direction. We're creating jobs faster than all but two or three other states in America. Everybody in the country is talking about North Carolina. But the fact of the matter is we have a long way to go. And this state is at a crossroads. It's purely and simply that. My efforts, and you know what my efforts have been, I thought I was going to be the education governor. And I love it. I've lived it my whole life. I thought I was going to come in and be able to push through the college promise that you know I believe so much in, helping every student graduate high school and go on to a career vocational training program or college. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do much of anything but do furloughs and lay off people, eliminate positions, Stop providing assistance from the state for good activities all across North Carolina. Free salaries, pull back on all the benefits that folks had continued to believe in in North Carolina. Tough times. But you know, I didn't get to be the first woman governor because I'm a sweet, non-assuming person. I got to be the governor because I'm tough as nails and I can make hard decisions when the time calls for them, and that is what we've done in North Carolina is better today than it was in January of 2009 because of you and because of this General Assembly and because of me. But again, we've got a long way to go. I talk truth with you. I'm not a smooth-talking politician. I come in and tell you just as I see it. That's the reason you like me or you hate me. And this morning, I'm here to tell you what I believe from the bottom of my heart. This is not a lift you up and hold you high and sing flowery songs to you to make you all giddy with happiness. This is a stark reality of where we find ourselves in North Carolina as we are now in the third or fourth week of this General Assembly. My primary focus for more than two years has been on one thing, creating jobs, growing small businesses in North Carolina, because you and I know that's where the rubber meets the road. If our people can't find work, then our economy cannot prosper, and everything that we believe in as North Carolinians will go backwards. I'm a history lover, I'm an old history teacher, and I've read a lot of history in the last two years, late at night when I couldn't sleep. And any book that you read about North Carolina talks about leadership and about tough decision-making and tough leaders who didn't give a flip about whether they were re-elected, but who did the right thing to put North Carolina on the path to the future, to create, if you will, tomorrow's promise today. That's what we're about. And I've tried to do that around jobs, around education, around shoring up our capacity to educate our people. Yeah, you've seen me speak up. If teachers aren't teaching and they can't help kids do what they need to do to be competitive in the 21st century, we'll try to help them for a year, but then we'll fire them if they have to be fired. We're going to do that because every child deserves a shot in the future. You got here. I got here because of the public schools of North Carolina. These are all things that are going to be debated in the General Assembly this year. What's going to happen to our public schools? What's going to happen to the community college? What's going to happen to the universities? Are we going to make decisions to cut our way out of a 3.6 or whatever it is deficit? Or are we going to do what we need to do? Just as leaders, generation after generation, have done for North Carolina. When you go home tonight, Google Terry Sanford. Google Jim Martin or Jim Holzhauser. Google Jim Hunt. It's not Democrats. It's not Republicans. It's leaders. And it's a General Assembly who stood up and who did what needed to be done. You don't go backwards when you need to be going forwards in a global economy. You don't refuse to educate your seed corn if you're going to actually compete in a global com com economy. If you're going to create tomorrow's promise today, then you've got to do what you've got to do, even in tough times. I need for you all to stand up and shout it from the rooftops with me in every community across this state. I'm going to make tough decisions. I'm going to be criticized them for them. But it, night when I put my head on the pillow and say my prayers, I know that I'm trying as the governor of this great state to make sure that North Carolina can play with the big boys across the world 
so that our people are globally competitive in the 21st century. And it all starts with schools. It all starts with schools.